everyone, and welcome to the final part of making weavers. Yes, you heard that correctly, the final part. I'm actually going to finish it after two years. In this part we will be looking at finishing up the face, so doing the last bits of special effects makeup, and we're going to finish the hats with the bandages and the blood and everything, so that will be a nice bit of weathering. So without further ado, let's get crafting. Last month we remade and reattached the chin for weavers. In the meanwhile, I have added another layer of latex around the edge and colored all of it with foundation in the same way that I colored the rest of the face. And I must say that the edge is, well, not nearly invisible, but it's less visible than I anticipated when I first started out switching the chin. I think that the face is latex-wise, it is done. I mean, we've got the nose here, and this means that now I'll have to add some other colors, maybe a bit more red, a bit blue, and I can start putting the eyes in. Oh, and of course, we need a few extra hairs on that wart. So, that's what we're going to do for Weaves. I have added some hairs to the wart, so that's now looking nice and ugly. But the rest of the face is still one color. I only colored this so far with the plain foundation and all the details in the face are falling a bit flat now. If you also look at the reference images, her nose is quite red, she has red spots all over her face and that also adds to, well, the grossness because then you can see all the wrinkles and all the textures which are in here. I don't own a whole lot of makeup, but I do own some face paint. So I'm just going to see if it will work, whether we can just color the face the tiniest bit with this face paint. I've got a sponge which I made just the tiniest bit damp because we don't want to use a whole lot of water because we don't want to use a whole lot of paint. Um, so I can just rub my brush over the sponge. Let's see, that's pretty much what we want. And I can just lightly in this case, add it to the nose. Because of all the texture, if it wants to focus, because of all the texture, we won't get a single solid color. It's just going to paint the, t the tops of it. So, um, I think we can actually create some nice extra texture with that. So let's just do that. Just with that tiny bit of paint, we already get a lot more character. So now it's just a nose, but I will be coloring the rest of the face, um, either slightly or very obviously with red. I do see that the red is showing up a bit more enthusiastically than it is in real life. So no, she is not going to be um, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, but just weave us. I'm going to have another look at the reference image and continue coloring this on the locations where it is also very red on the reference image. In game her eyes look like some sort of insect hive gross thing full of holes and I'm trying to replicate that by, well, I took these uh, googly eyes, I took off the back and I took out the, the black thingy that is the googly part of the eye and I painted part of the insides of the eyes red. If you look at the screenshots in game, it looks like her eyes are holes and a bit reddish all around. So that's what I'm trying to replicate here. And I think it looks a perfectly gross and what is going on there. And that's the look that I'm going for. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how this face is turning out. I think most of the special effects part of this face is now done. Soon I will have to glue this to my actual face and then we can do the bandages that go around here, add the hair and then we this is pretty much done. So just for clarification, when I'm talking about reference images, this is the main image that I'm going off. And I must say 
it is actually starting to look like the actual thing. So today we are going to hopefully add all of that and the bandage over her uh, eye. I already have the hat and the hat is on quite sturdy so hopefully we can just attach everything to the hat and it will stay on. So bear with me today, it, you, I will show you a lot of my messy hair because hat. So what I did is was I grabbed a piece of fabric and I started manipulating this and attaching it to the hat in a way that it resembled the reference picture. So first I'm making the big bandage around the chin and then once that is in place correctly, after that I attached all the separate bandages that go over the eye. You might see me open and close my mouth a few times. This is just to check that when the bandage is attached that I can actually still open my mouth. Which, it's rather practical to be able to talk and move around when wearing a costume. Then after that, it is also practical to check whether I can still take the hat off, which is what you see me trying here. And I had indeed made it a bit too tight, so I had to readjust parts of the bandage. Then it was time to add the bandages that go over the eye. For this I also grabbed the latex makeup to check where the bandages can start and where the bandages can end. After that it is just a matter of doubling the bandages up until the entire gap is filled. Now that we've got everything in position, we have to attach it. Eventually I will attach this back flap with a snap button, uh, because if it is up here I cannot get the hat off and on my head. But the snap button here is needed to make sure that this isn't, that the bottom here isn't too loose. Um, so I will be attaching all of this, I guess I will be gluing the top part and I might put a few stitches in here with white thread because this will hopefully eventually become slightly invisible anyway uh, with all the weathering that will be going on here uh, as this will need a big splatter of fake blood over it. Um, so yeah, I will be gluing this and sewing this. Okay, quick conclusion, super glue is not gonna work. So then we will be sewing this as well, I guess. And with the felt being as thick as, as it is, you hopefully won't see the thread on the outside. Like that. It won't focus. There we go. No thread. Everything has been stitched together. I chose a dark red thread for the inside on the hat. The felt was thick enough that you, that you don't see any of the uh, threads on the outside, but just to be sure. And for the bandages, my newly acquired skills of almost invisible hand sewing came in quite handy. Well, that's not the almost invisible, but that's good enough. It will be weathered and really dirty later on, so this will not be visible anymore. I also, on the inside for the bandages, I did a rough overcast of the edges because this part will be rubbing it against my face the entire time so I don't want this to fray and end up coming loose. Um, so next up, uh, well eventually I'll have to add a snap button here on the back but we'll do that at the end when I know how tight this has to be. So now I guess I'll have to fit this when I'm wearing the neck wraps so that I know how this fits exactly. And then after that, we can also start adding the fun bits like the hair. With a big project like this, it's quite important to do multiple fittings, especially with pieces such as this, which need to be fitted in quite a specific way. Now that I'm wearing the entire costume, I can indeed see that there were one or two things that needed adjusting, which is what you can see me do here.
the adjustments have been made. I made an extra seam here and this part has been folded back a bit. Next up we could add the hair, but before I want to do that, there is something else I think I have to do first, which is a fun part, namely weathering this. Basically, when you're wearing a bandage for I don't know how many hundreds of years, it's probably not gonna stay white. So we get to dirty this thing up. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of fabric, try out some different methods and then see what works best to get this nice and dirty without it actually being dirty and leaving marks on other stuff. So I grabbed a piece of scrap fabric and what better way to dirty things up than to use actual dirt. So I will be giving the entire thing a uh, small layer of dirt. And then after that we can see if we need to add more or if that's enough. So, uh, let's dirty it up. what it looks like when it is fully dirtied. Unfortunately the camera doesn't really pick it up so I put a piece of clean fabric underneath. Hopefully you can see a slight difference between the clean fabric and the well not so clean fabric. The next step is if you remember the reference picture adding blood all over this eye. It looks like half coagulated blood, so I'll have to do some internet research into what the right color is for half coagulated blood and see if I can mix my paints to make it look like that color and then just slap and sprinkle and do whatever it over this side. Today we're going to add the blood that's going on here. Um, it looks like sort of half uh, fresh blood and sort of half dried blood somewhere in between. Um, so my plan is to make a ring of somewhat darker, more dried blood at the edges and then make it appear as if there is more fresh blood in the middle. I did a bit of test uh, patches yesterday. This is all three the exact same color paint except that this one has one drop of latex mi mixed in and this one has a lot of latex mixed in and I think that with a single drop of latex it gets a tiny bit of shine and I think that works quite well for the fresh blood and I'll use that in a slightly more brownish shade for the dried up blood. So we're first going to mix up mix the dried blood and then fill all the middle part in with the fresh blood. So I mixed up this color it's slightly liver kind of color and I guess that will work for dried blood especially if we and don't use a whole lot of paint. And just make some like that. I mean, if we compare that to that, it will look like it's dried blood. leave this to dry for now and then when this is dry we can add the fresh blood in the middle. This blood has now dried it is time to add well the fresher blood and as you can see I mixed some extra brown in halfway and thus the colors changed a bit which well makes it look more realistic. Now I'll first mix up the actual color and then I'll add a drop of latex to make it look more uh, a bit shiny. So this blood will also be redder than the previous 
blood because, well, it is fresher. But it does need a bit of brown because the red that I have here is, well, very red. Even for blood. Now I'm grabbing a different paintbrush. Uh, before I did this, I rubbed a drop of dishwashing liquid on this brush so that the latex won't stick to the brush when I rinse it off. The latex that I'm using here is not a prosthetic grade latex. Uh, don't immediately rub this on your face because I think the ammonia content is higher than prosthetic grade. So it is a bit rougher on your face. Does mean however that this one is cheaper. And that was a bit too much latex but I guess that's doable. I'll just let some of it run off. This latex as you can see is also a lot more runny uh, than the latex that I usually use. So the latex that I used for Weavess's face itself is slightly less runny than this one. And there we go. Something that appears to be fresh-ish blood. looks nice and gross. Again, we're leaving this to dry and then let's see how it turns out. And this is what it currently looks like. I think it looks nice and gross, which exact is exactly what we're going for. So when I looked again at the reference images, I noticed that uh, it should be a lot bigger, aka um, it should go all the way up here and all the way up here. And the um, pieces of fabric should lay flat on top of each other. That looks a lot better than right now, because when I'm moving, and there are gaps between it. So, um, yeah, you can paint some more paint on that, I guess. This is what it looks like after adding some more paint. I still continued adding multiple colors and I think the result looks pretty gross, which is exactly what we are going for. So yay! Now after the paint has completely dried, I will attach the bandages together so that they don't open up as much when I'm wearing it. Now that the hat has been nicely dirtied up, it's time to add some hair. If you look at the reference images, there's some hair poking out here and here. Here, so basically, hair framing her face underneath the bandages. For that, I bought uh, secondhand somewhere uh, this string of wefts. It's pretty long, nice and grey. So we can just cut off a few pieces and attach them where we want. Now, with these wefts, I think we can just cut a piece off and sew it in. Yeah, we can just cut that. Oh, let's see how much hair do we want. I think this is a nice amount. We can always thin it out later. Mm, let's see, I think we can best put it here <coughs> because that way we don't make any more stitches in uh, the bandages because those are more visible than when we make stitches in the hat. So that means that we can now let's sew that in and make the other side as well. This is what it looks like with the hair attached. These really are the finishing touches that, well, finish the entire thing off. The wefts are added in, it's difficult to show, just by stitching them on. Same goes for the other side. And I decided to add slightly less hair on the other side. I started with this one. Um, because I thought this was a bit much hair for the wispy old person hair. Um, so I added less on this side and I will thin this out a bit so that it looks full at the top but looks 
sad at the bottom. <laughs> That's basically what we're going for. And then, well, um, next up, um, I don't know yet. I'll have to see what else has to be done in this costume because, frankly, that's actually nearing completion. So let me just show you how I thin this out. I divide the hair up, well, in uh, as flat as possible. And then I'm going to grab just the tiniest bit of hair. Make that again as flat as possible between my fingers. And then cut that off, well, irregularly. See that I cut too much off. Same like that. So. This way, um, you shouldn't just chop big chunks off at one in one go because then it will look well like it's chopped off. You want it to look a bit like it broke down naturally. So I already chopped off a bit here at the top, and now I'm chopping stuff off here in the middle, and then I'll chop some more there so that we only have a few hairs left over here. But it starts out quite full, and then it just gradually thins down. not a whole lot and I'll have to continue doing this for a while but you can already slightly see that the hair is fuller here at the top than it is at the bottom but we'll have to thin it down some more I think that is starting to look like what we want we have a slightly fuller bit of hair at the top and then when we go down it becomes less and less making it end up a bit wispy. So, on to the next step for Weavis. So, um, spoiler warning, there was no next step. I looked at my list and that was actually done. So, up next, enjoy the end result. Mm -hmm. 